Hello! Today's video is going to be about the Raspberry Pi 400. Um, I'm going to be breaking away from some of my more recent videos and going back to an older project. So, we got our Pi 400 down here. And I'm going to be plugging in my V20 that's on this PCB that plugs into the pin header. And I also have a V30 uh, that plugs in. So actually, this is the V30. This is the uh, V20. So let me uh, just plug in the uh, V20 first. Back up here to the screen. To run this, I just went to my website and downloaded the um, the file. Let's uh, go there real quick. So it'd be under the Raspberry Pi second project. And then down here you've got the version 2 for the V20. Uh, so this top one, or this one here is for the V30 and then version 2 V20 is down here. So depending on which processor you have. This one here is for version 1. I probably only send out about 5 of those. Uh, but it, I still have it available. Um, let's, uh, let's go over here and we'll run it. So it's kind of going to be a small screen. Let's, uh, let's zoom in. So we just... Oh, they're not blurry. So V20, I just type in CD space V20, and then you run up by dot forward slash pi 86. And there you go, it's booting DOS from a hard drive image. We can get a less blurry here. It's not liking that at all. I think that's probably about the best we can do there. So this this has got a BIOS that I wrote, and I wrote the uh, virtual screen as well as well as the virtual keyboard. So it's works it's kind of s slow because everything other than the processor is simulated or emulated whichever way you want to refer to it the um v30 is a touch faster uh just because it can grab 16 bits at a time the bus cycle is actually one of the slowest parts of this the Raspberry Pi is not actually that fast when it comes to that kind of stuff. So we'll uh, we'll just halt this, and I'll run the V30. So this one is just in a directory called version two. Same thing, Pi eighty six will boot it. And I mean, it's not that much faster, but it, you can kind of notice a little bit. Um, now, the, the big advantage to this is this was a very good learning tool for me when it came to designing my actual uh, motherboards. I, I really learned how the uh, system bus worked on the uh, 8088 processor, as well as the 8086. I'm pretty sure I could make an 8086 at this point. Um, all the memory is actually here. Um, it's got one megabyte of memory virtually, no matter what. So let's just say, let's dump like, uh, just a E0. And it's going to come in and it's all zeros because there's nothing that's been put there. Uh, it's pretty pretty handy. Um, the way the keyboard works currently is uh, 
the Raspberry Pi actually just inserts the keystrokes. We can look at the code here in a second. But you can see as I type, it says IO9. It's kind of, I haven't worked on this in a while, but uh, that's interrupt nine. That's all it does is puts a character in the corner there. That's your keyboard interrupt. And that's so that you could actually do, um, it does put the keyboard uh, scan code or character code in port 60, I think. So that uh, things like uh, your your games will work, like uh, let's see if I can. See, it's gonna take forever. There it goes. Okay, so you can see compared to like uh, some of the other computers I've demoed lately, this is uh, a lot slower. But that interrupt 9 is important because like this game requires interrupt 9 directly. It reads from the keyboard controller directly. It does not use the BIOS. And that's why uh, I added the, the hardware interrupts on version 2. But anyway, this is more about um, the Pi 400 and this running on the Pi 400. It's kind of neat. It plugs in kind of like a, a game cartridge. There was a guy a few months ago or maybe even longer ago that ran one of these on a Pi 400 and it was kind of neat. You maybe make a little case for it. It says like x86 or something, but I'm going to the code here. So if you see, I'll go back over here for a second. When I ran the V20, it wrote out here some some saying that the I.O. it was writing data F, F to I.O. Uh, 2, F2, and that. Well, that's where this comes in handy, is you, you can come over here to, um, let's go version 2. The let's open those with Genie. Yeah, so this is the the main bus control right here. So anywhere along here, you can insert like uh, write outs. And uh, actually, the the only difference between the code from the V twenty to the V thirty is the um, down here. It'll say um, if the processor equals. So 88. So this x86 PP file is the same on both. It just determines which processor to run and it just runs in a loop on the bus. And this is where I learned a lot was you're looking at the, the pins. So you, you're going to read in the control bus and then you determine what to do with the pins. And then right here is where I put in that print F write IO and the, the, the data uh, from the port or and then right here you could do right to the port so i've actually wrote programs where you could print out and so you could put these in anywhere you put in here like to grab the address and print out the address every time a bus cycle reads to the uh, to the terminal here and you're going to see where that processor is reading and writing to all the time i mean it's going to be reasonably quick to where it's probably hard to see but um, you can put delays in there too, so you can kind of slow it down. The, uh, the V series processor can actually be halted completely. Like, uh, with the clock, the clock can just stop and start and it doesn't corrupt it. Um, so anyway, like I said, you come down here, you got processor 86 and you can see that there's a bit more to the bus decoding down here. And that's, you know, cause you're double 16 bit. The interrupt control it comes down here because the interrupt's just a bus cycle. And uh, it's got to click four times because it does like a, there's, it's, it's a lot to explain. But when it comes down here and says, okay, it's an interrupt, click, click, click. And then it's looking for what interrupt on the uh, data bus. And look over here, we've got our, should be an interrupt. 
Key Curls Timer, VGA. Can't remember where I put it. It's been a long time. Might be in the, just might be in the timer one. No. Just double check to make sure it's not at the bottom of here. Right memory array. It may be in the This is the, the keyboard controller here. So on a keyboard event, it checks for what's going on and then it inserts the character. So this is where the Raspberry Pi acts as the, it, well, it's beyond a keyboard controller. It actually acts as the keyboard interrupt in a way. That's why I label this interrupt nine. Anyway, I'm not finding that interrupt controller right at the bat, but I'll try to explain how it works. So it sets a value. Uh, so read interrupts right here. That's a function from, that should be in the header here, 286. Anyway, that, herring, wiring pie. So what it does anyway, is it reads the interrupt and what I've done is, uh, sorry, it reads interrupt. If it's just a, a one, then that's the actual timer click. So if you look at the timer, it calls IRQ zero every time it clicks, um, which runs in a thread here, you can see, but interrupt case two, this would be in binary, would be the second digit, so inter IRQ nine, and then that calls the IRQ uh, that that's where we write to that that in the upper corner. Case three would be both IRQ one and IRQ two, so interrupt eight, interrupt nine. And uh, what I've done is I've set the priority in here as uh, call and interrupt. Uh, so so writes here to port uh, to the data port. Uh, eight, which would be interrupt eight. So you could change this interrupt nine, and then what will happen is this comes down here, and it says the IRQ flag faults for zero, and uh, then the, it's how you set your priorities. So there is no, like, 8259 interrupt controller on this. It um, You don't even set it up. You don't even have to set it up. It's just built into the C code here. You can see the timer, so if it calls IRQ0, that's setting the flag. I wish I could find that function easily, but it's somewhere in my code. It may actually be in this code. Right here. Actually, here it is right here. So, read interrupts. So you've got these, uh, basically, true or false, 0 or 1, uh, IRQ0, IRQ1 read interrupts returns a value of IRQ zero's flag, which is right here, as well as IRQ one's flag. So that's how you get that one, two, or three. Um, and then to set the interrupt, so you go IRQ zero, it just makes it true. And it digitally right, so sets the pin for interrupt request to high. And that's how you trigger your hardware interrupts. So. But anyway, that's how that's where this came in handy is, you know, you got your read control bus here and you're looking at the direction, the IO mem, and it analyzes the interrupt acknowledged to see if the interrupt's being acknowledged. That's your control bus. Read your memory bank, uh, bus direction here. So every it's all part of the bus control. This is a C8086, so you've got write data to port seven, writes data to port uh, eight through fifteen. Um, and that's where this came in handy. And so that's that's more about um, the code of my uh, the I guess you call it Pi eighty six. But this is more about 
running it here on the uh, Pi 400, which works pretty good. Um, compared to the other one, I think the Pi 400 is just a Raspberry Pi 4. I don't think there's, I don't think it's any faster. So this is what I've ran it in for years. The couple years that I've had this project up and running. Same thing. You just plug it, just plug it into the header there. So anyway, thanks for checking out my video today about the uh, Pi 400 running my 80 or V20 and V30 PCBs.